Good morning. Good morning. I told you guys, um, uh, five or ten minutes, but I think it was more like one. So I appreciate your patience. I know I'm running a little bit behind, but I am having just to be on while it's still morning. Hi, doggies. Oh, ah, I love this green. Except not my mouth. Yeah, hi, girls. Yes, hello. Ah, Robin, you're terrible. Oh, yeah. Um, oh my goodness. Um, I saw Amber and Letty. Good morning, you guys. Hi. Hi. I saw Diana. Good morning, Diana. Or I guess good evening to you, Diana. Um, ah. <laughs> you silly doggy. Um, so, and oh, um, May's birthday is this week, so we will probably be a little bit busier later in the week. Um, just so that you guys know. Um, but other than that, um, so we don't have a whole lot of updates um, other than the obvious one being that Myra is with puppies. Um, at least we're pretty sure. Uh, and so, um, you know, other than regular updates that we're usually given, um, we'll probably we'll be spending these next few weeks talking about um, Talking about um, uh, to, to, to also kind of cover for new families, we'll be revisiting um, where we get our dogs. Um, oh, oh, I hate when they like get their tongue in there, they lick you, like they lick you inside your mouth. That's the worst. Like sometimes they just like slip it in, and other times they get it in and then like swipe. Anyway. Um, but so while Myra is, um, cooking for babies, I wanted to revisit some of those things like, you know, where we got Myra, how we found her, um, you know, and also with their dogs, how we, how we find them, um, how we prepare them for being moms and dads. Um, and then also kind of like our philosophy with raising puppies. Um, as you can see, we have all of our moms and dads in the house. Um, only four of our moms. So our, our main like sleeping area for the dogs, we don't, we don't even crate them at night. Um, but our main sleeping area for like the pack, um, like the baseline, you could say it would be the laundry room. They have a bunch of beds in here and they've got a potty tray and a big giant water trough. Um, and so, um, it's kind of like, um, like if May is staying the night somewhere, Paris will stay the night um, in the laundry room with the other dogs. Um, but right now we only have four moms that sleep in there, um, which would be Missy, Missy, Robin, Remy, and Pom Pom. Um, Myra is sleeping with us. Um, usually pregnant moms, um, we don't need to bring them in until later in the pregnancy, but because we don't have really anything going on, we don't have any puppies in our bedroom. Uh, we don't have anybody else that we're trying to separate. Um, we're just bringing her in now because she's so sweet. And she's a good bed sleeper. So um, Myra, Mocha, and Daisy sleep in bed with me and Drew. And then Paris, which is this one, she sleeps with May. And then Vienna dog right here, she sleeps with Bella. Vienna is such a, she is such a good dog. I am so proud of her because I never pictured um, a puppy, no less. I mean, she's not a puppy really anymore, but um, when she was a puppy, she she really respected a five-year-old Bella um, as being more dominant than her and being her leader. And it really has helped Bella um, like grow up a little bit, especially with school starting because she's had to be responsible for her. And um, even when um, when she started taking her up in her bedroom, she one day she came running down and she was like, mom, dad, you know what Vienna did? And Drew and I looked at each other like, oh gosh, what'd she do? And Bella goes, she pooped. And so we are like, all right, all right, we'll, we'll get it. Thanks for telling us. And she was like, no, no, I'm frustrated because she pooped. And so I had to go get a piece of toilet paper and I had to pick it up and flush it down the toilet. And so we were like, oh, oh, that's kind of nice. Good job, Bella. And so she was so sweet because she was very, um, 
I could tell she was kind of mirroring how um, Drew and I will be like, oh, dog had an accident. I got to pick it up. Um, but we're so proud of her for she, um, you know, a lot of times she'll just come and let us know that there's something that needs to be cleaned. But she has really, she's internalized so much that Vienna is her responsibility that when Vienna chews something up, Vienna goes potty on, on the carpet, which she has. Um, but if she, or she goes poop, Bella will have the initiative and the proactivity to clean it up and then she'll come and tell us about it when she can report that it's all clean and you know ready to go. And you know, of course, when she potties and you know, there's more stuff that we'll have to do. But um, Bella has she takes it very seriously. And um, we've we've learned that um, children having their own dogs is at least in our experience, is seriously underrated um, just because of how much it's done for our kids um, as far as like um, confidence building and self-esteem building um, because all these little responsibilities that they have for them, um, they see their dogs grow and develop um, from those, from the training that they do, from the reinforcements that they encourage. Like Paris, for instance, may can look at her and know that she, oh goodness, she is, Paris is like the result, she's the fruits of all of May's labor. And now that Vienna is more than a year old, I think Bella is kind of feeling the same way about Vienna. She's looking at her and she just feels a lot of pride because so much of what Vienna does and has learned is because of Bella. And even like getting into bed, we didn't know how Bella was going to, how Vienna was going to sleep up there because Bella has a locked bed and it has a slide and a ladder. And we weren't sure how, because Vienna was going to be able to jump up and down. And um, so Bella slung some blankets down her slide and she went crawling up it and Vienna just went behind her and Vienna has been climbing into her bed by crawling up the slide ever since. And so that was something that Bella did. Drew and I didn't even think of it, but Bella did that. Um, it taught Vienna something. And now like she sees that every day, something that she taught her. So um, it really helps build their, um, build their everything, but their, their self-esteem and their confidence. And their, I mean, the pride that Bella has in herself is um, just awesome. I mean, she beams with pride. So, um, she we call um bella is uh, yes bella is vienna's mommy and she really loves that but um and so we were unsure how she would do because she's she was only five when bella or when vienna was born um and may was at least like 10 or 11 when we brought paris home and so um May was, you know, a little bit older, easier to understand a lot of the things about responsibility. Um, but I think Bella is actually, she's at that age where they take these things very seriously. If you tell them, like, this is the way to do it, like, they will follow it to the letter. And so I think it was a good age to introduce um, a doggy to Bella. <laughs> what are you doing, Vienna? I don't think resting your head on Myra's head is going to encourage her to keep up the phone. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, but we get our moms and our dads from um, show breeders, um, or at least most of them are from show breeders. If they're not from a, a specific, like an actual show breeder, they're from a breeder who previously did shows. They have the dogs of that caliber. Um, we 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 go to breeders like that because um, we trust we can trust that um the, the puppies that are being born to them are they have generation upon generation upon generation of health clear moms and dads and so um you know, that really helps increase our chances for when our puppy gets older and we send off to do their health testing that um everything comes back good but um um, you know, that's just one piece of it. They, they're, you know, Vienna's mom, her grandma, her dad, her grandpas. Um, they were all raised in the home underfoot as part of the family. 
And so um, one thing we've noticed with our moms and their litters is they really rub off a lot of their habits and their personality onto their puppies. And each mom, they their litters have a sort of personality to the whole litter. And, um, you know, Paris's personality, this right here, this lazy noodle over here. Um, <laughs> you need a bath. Um, her puppies are just like that. And this is how Vienna oftentimes is when I go up to talk about it into bed. Um, they usually, the puppies often have like a bit of, um, if Kelsey is in the chat or rewatching later, she can tell you um, about how Daisy has rubbed off on Beatrix. Um, she has a lot of stories about Beatrix that um, Beatrix is a puppy from Daisy's last litter. She's almost a year old um, and she's a beautiful blue girl. She's so pretty. Uh, and, um, but she's the sweetest little dog and she's just got a splash of Daisy's attitude. And um, it's like this, a perfect little mix from what Kelsey describes because she's everything she needs in an ESA. And then she's got that little extra two from Daisy um, for a little bit of entertainment. Um, and uh, so anyway, but we get our dogs from um, responsible breeders that are raising puppies kind of like up to our standards. Um, because one of the big reasons we got into this was because when we were first searching for our first one, um, we were really disappointed to see how many times we would go to a website um, and everything looked great on the website. The, the words sounded good. Their program sounded great. The, what they did sounded, it ever, it, it ticked all the boxes and, um, you know, filled out all the, filled all the checklists. Um, but then when we call or go visit, it's like, it doesn't match. And, um, I try to be careful with my words around this because I really don't want to, um, talk negatively about any other breeders or breeding practices because I know that everybody kind of falls into their own rhythm. Um, you know, we didn't just start breeding our dogs and, you know, have this set up the way it is now. Um, there was a, a there was a, we kind of had to forge our own path and figure out what worked. And so I don't like to say, I don't want to, um, I don't want to poop on anybody um, for the way that they do things, because if that's works for them, um, you know, I, I trust, you know, that what they're doing works for them and what we do will work for us. But um, we were disappointed because we expected, I think, a little bit more hands-on, um, par like parenting, um, hands-on raising of the puppies. Um, and on our website, when I think when it comes up in Google search, the little, um, the little like tagline, it says hand-raised puppies. And that sounded so silly to me at first because I was thinking like puppies are hand-raised. How are they not hand-raised? Um, but that's kind of what we mean by that is um, there are some breeders that are of the mindset that mom can raise her puppies and that's what mother nature is meant to do and mother nature will do it. And, um, you know, more often than not, that is the case. Um, however, in our experience, we've come to see that um, like a delivery going textbook smooth is really the exception to the rule. Um, we almost, there's almost always some sort of hiccup that we've got to work through. Um, and it, it's that way when we, when we have a litter of puppies that we're raising as well. Um, we got to monitor everybody's weights. Um, if a puppy has um, like a congenital heart condition, um, that's not going to be noticeable right away. And so it's important to monitor them that first like five to seven days very closely because um, when they were in utero, mom is breathing for them. She is, so she's oxygenating for them. She's circulating their blood. She is helping them grow. She is um, filtering their blood and um, like cleaning it out of toxins. Um, she's keeping their, their body going. 
and it's her heart that is doing the pumping. And so their hearts are working, but if they have an unhealthy heart, um, it's not going to show up. They will continue to grow. Usually, generally speaking, they will continue to grow like they should um, because the mom is like mechanically operating the puppy. Um, and so when then they're born and they no longer have um, the support that they had from their mom, um, if they have a congenital heart issue, um, you know, it won't show up right away because they're born usually at a healthy birth weight. And um, when they're healthy, they're at their healthiest that they're going to be if they have a congenital heart issue. Um, they're at their healthiest when they're first born because they are their fattest, they have the most energy. Um, and it's really just gonna go downhill from there because um, they're, if they have a congenital heart problem, the first sign we notice is difficulty nursing. Now. Almost all puppies, just like with people, um, they have to learn how to nurse. It's not um, an instant um, reflex sort of thing. They need to learn how to do it. And so it's not uncommon for us to have two or three puppies that take a few days to learn how to nurse. And so those first few days, we're, we're having to differentiate between um, puppies that need help getting started and puppies that might have a more serious problem. And so that's why getting their weights is important because... Um, a puppy who is just struggling to learn how to nurse, they're still going to gain weight, um, even if it's a little bit slower. A puppy with a congenital heart problem is not going to gain weight like the other puppies because as they're they're nursing, um, they are struggling just to continue breathing while they're nursing. And so what they are suckling and swallowing is usually not nearly as efficient um, because they are trying much harder to breathe and oxygenate while they're nursing. And so what also happens is they tire really easily and they stop nursing really quickly. And so where one puppy might nurse for 10 minutes before going to sleep, a puppy with an underlying heart issue might nurse for three minutes before going to sleep because it's hard. It's hard work, especially if they're not able to oxygenate. Um, and we'll see their little noses turn um, like a real pale color and sometimes they'll start turning blue. Um, and um, so we can usually kind of see it, for, like we can usually see like by day three, um, on day two, we might be able to pinpoint some concerning puppies. Um, and, and when we have the live stream set up and um, we've got families who are waiting for reservation day, we try to be very transparent with everybody because we want you guys to know um, which puppies are doing well, which ones are um, which ones are healthy, which ones are, are strong. Um, because we don't we don't want anybody to start bonding to a puppy who um, might have a serious problem. And um, what's tough with a heart puppy like that is there's not much we can do. Um, we have had, we had one puppy who, um, she displayed the symptoms of a heart problem, but, um, it turned out, we just, we were very aggressive with supplementation and keeping her full. And after, I think about three weeks, she finally caught up, but what it turned out being in her case was, um, she was a runt. And being a runt, she also needed to learn how to nurse. And so being a runt, she was very weak to begin with. And so even as she learned how to nurse, she just wasn't very strong enough to do it. And so it, that was kind of masquerading as a potential heart problem. And she had already, she had been picked by family and we had even, Jenny was her name. Um, we had talked to her family about um, the possibility of her having um, an issue with her heart. and. Um, you know, what we would do in the situation. And, um, but that we hadn't given up hope. We still, we felt that she was improving at that point. And so, um, but we wanted to touch all of our bases and talk to the family about, you know, our concerns. And so we try to be very transparent with our families um, because we want this to be a good experience for you guys. Um, and, but Jenny, she, we kept supplementing her and we were, she was a Missy puppy and we would put her back onto Missy 
and she eventually came around and she was just a little bit smaller than her litter mates, but she, she came back like in full force and she came, she was barking up a storm and playful and energetic. She really came back. She is one of our like miracle babies. We have a couple of miracle puppies and she's one of them. Um, but usually they're not so lucky. Usually, um, well, usually if it's a heart puppy, they're not usually born as a runt. Um, they usually grow just fine in utero. Um, and so that was one thing that Jenny had that was a little different than a typical hurt puppy was that um, she had the complication of being a runt. And so we held on to hope that that was the source of her problems. And it turned out that that, that was that was right. Um, and so, but this is why it's important for us to monitor and write down all the numbers because we need to be able to deduce what's what and what could be coming from a runt thing or a heart thing. Is it a problem from pregnancy or is it a problem, you know, just a mechanical issue that we can resolve now? Um, and so there's a lot that we're looking out for. And sometimes we have really easy litters and there's no problems and everybody's weights are checking in great each morning. Um, those litters are really easy. Um, but usually we've got, um, it's pretty normal. Um, to, um, for any, any litter, any given litter of puppies that's born, it's very common for at least one puppy to either be a stillbirth or not live past that, that, that two week, that first two weeks is pretty crucial. Um, and, um, and so it's not uncommon for at least one puppy to, um, not make it. And, the reason for that is because they have a whole litter. They have, they release eight or 10 eggs and you might get six, to eight puppies from that. And, um, it's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of puppies for mom and, um, it's a lot has to go right for a healthy baby of any kind. And so when you have that many in a group, um, just statistically speaking, you're just going to have, you're going to increase the chances that there's going to be one um, that didn't didn't win the genetic lottery. Um, so, um, oh, I got off track from where we pick our moms and dads. Um, when we're looking for a dog to add to our pack, like a mom or a dad, um, we we reach out to um, these different breeders that we have and. Um, by now they know what we do, but, um, initially, like when we were looking for the dogs we have now, we explained what we were, what we're about that, um, we raised Cavaliers with an emphasis on emotional support animals. Um, we don't just breed moms and dads and raise a litter and then go out looking for families who might want a puppy. Um, we raise our puppies with families usually already in mind, um, and, you know, while Myra is pregnant, for example, that's when we'll be kind of keeping an eye out for families who might be looking for a puppy or who are looking for an ESA. Um, and we usually have um, we usually have those families. We like to find them during the pregnancy because um, especially for younger, either younger, younger adults or children, it's really nice. Um, and especially even more if you have a mental health condition, anxiety, depression, um, um, to be able to see the delivery. Um, with Myra's delivery, we will um, we'll stream her delivery so you guys will be able to see that. Um, and from then on, we stream the puppies um, and we'll stream them in their pen when they're little. And then, um, you know, as they get bigger and we start doing more with them, we will stream them, you know, around the house, running around the living room, skidding across the, the slick floor, um, taking them outside to go potty, um, just all the different things that we do with them. We um, do just about all of their care online um, or on the stream. Um, we give their shots on the stream. We do their dewormings, their weight checks, um, all that good stuff. So, um, and when we start potty training, we um, pull out the pellets and we show you guys how we potty train them, or at least how we begin potty training them, um, which we like to do before their eyes are open because a 
a big part of the potty training is has to do with the scent of the pine pellets. And when their eyes are closed, their their sense of smell is heightened. And so um, there, there's a lot more that they can take in and um, it's more concentrated and it seems that they, it sticks a lot better. Um, the association with pellets to go potty. Um, the earlier we introduce it, the, um, which is truly usually between like five and seven days old. Um, we like it to be like just past that point where we've ruled out heart conditions or other underlying genetic illnesses that might um, get in the way of them developing into the wonderful puppies that they are meant to be. Um, and uh, so like, yeah, right after that, that heavy time monitoring as we're starting to transition into weekly weights um, is when we start pulling out the potty training. And it's real easy at first, like real subtle. The puppies probably don't even really notice because um, we just pull, we have a little, just a little like bowl of pellets and we just put the puppy over it and let mom potty them. And so that way they can smell the pellets while they go potty. Um, that's just the first step um, with the pellets is just associating the scent with going potty. Um, and so as they move um, and get bigger and their eyes open, um, we start incorporating it more um, as their development allows. But um, there seems to be a pretty big difference when we um, raise them with the pellet tray kind of alongside their developing um bodies because as they get bigger as they can start leaving the nest to go potty as they start caring about that stuff the pellets are right there ready to use and they've already got that association of pottying and pellets and so it just kind of helps them to transition with you know having to make the choice of going over to the pellets and go potty um and there is a pretty big difference when we compare um, our puppies that were raised with pellets versus a puppy that we brought home from another breeder and we taught them the pellets at eight weeks old. Um, it sticks a lot better for the puppies that have been raised with it um, since their eyes were shut. Um, Daisy actually, I think she's on the other side of the gate, but Daisy, um, she was raised with pellets and I don't think she was introduced to them that early but she was introduced to them um, while she was still with her breeder. And so she understood them when she came home at eight weeks and it's stuck with her way better than um, like Robin, for instance. So Daisy came home and we had just brought Robin home about three weeks prior and Robin was not pellet trained, but Daisy, when Daisy came home and we put the pellet tray in here, Daisy taught Robin. And so Robin is pellet trained um, but there's a big difference between Robin and Daisy. You know, Robin, um, she will still have an accident um, if she's like really got to go and she hasn't been outside or if we've been gone and they need to go outside. Um, she'll have an accident if, um, but she won't go out of her way to find the tray where Daisy will. Daisy, if there's not a tray, she will go to another room and find one. Um, and so it's just, I think the association is just stronger when um, they were exposed to it younger. Um, but we try to replicate that for our families as much as we can. Um, and then for our ESA families, we um, try to do little exercises with their puppies. Um, we raise all of our puppies to be ESAs, to um, have those ESA qualities. Um, there's just, when we have families that we know are going to be using their dogs as ESAs. Um, we'll talk to fam we'll talk to you guys to find out really um, how you plan to use your ESA. So like one family we had last fall or last summer, I should say, um, they had a, um, a, the family had a daughter who was, going away to college and the, the dog was going to be her ESA. And so they were, um, they got all the, the forms that they needed to, 
to get so that she could take um, her puppy away to college with her and live in the dorms. And I thought that was way cool because I didn't think they could do that. Um, I know I know there's some things that will come, that can can be accommodated, but um, I didn't think that they I didn't think they'd go for the dorms, but they did. Um, the school, uh, and so um, in situations like that, if there's anything that we can do that will help um, that transition, if there's going to be any sort of special circumstances. Um, like bed sleeping is a big one. Um, we'll teach them how to sleep in bed with the, with the pellets. Um, we have, um, a set of doggy stairs at the end of our bed and then a tray of pellets at the very bottom of those stairs. And so when you have an eight week old puppy who wakes up during the night, um, they'll, they always wake us up. I haven't had them not wake us up yet. They always come and scratch us on the faces. Um, and so we just remind them that the tray is right there at the bottom of the stairs because usually after going to bed they forget and so once we show them then they they use the, the pellets they come back up in bed and then it's a smooth night after that um i think nine out of ten times there may be one dog who um was a little more difficult than that but really all it took was just showing them where the tray was and they realized oh i can just use the tray here too and that's that um and so that's, it's something that's a lot easier for us to do here, kind of already knowing what their routine is and the dog being used to our house and, you know, everything that's here. Um, and so things like that we'll try to do here before you take them home. Um, just because, you know, when they go home, you're already trying to adjust to just having a new pen in a whole new house. And so... Um, some of those things that we can get them used to here, we will, because it'll just be way more time efficient, um, than if, if you have to wait till you bring them home. And so if you are a family looking for an ESA puppy and, um, if you have a psychiatrist or a therapist who, um, you've talked to about it, or even if you haven't talked to them about it, but, um, but you have one, I would really recommend, um, Asking them if they have any ideas for um, maybe other patients that they have had that have had an ESA and just little special things that their ESA did for them. Um, because there's, you know, your ESA, it's like a little, you know, it's like a build a bear. You can, you can make them however you want them. Um, you know, May has different little needs for Paris that Paris understands that, that, Daisy doesn't have for me. Um, and then, you know, with Daisy, she knows that I've got little quirks and um, Paris wouldn't understand those quirks. And, you know, that's one thing that's really nice too about, um, you know, an ESA over on the cat stream, I was mentioning therapy dogs versus ESAs. And um, the best way to describe or explain the purpose of an ESA would be to, you um, Think about a therapy dog and a therapy dog they have they have training and their training is more focused on a general population um you know and they're trained to you know they're usually very docile in the first place with docile in nature but they're trained to remain very calm you know if things change rapidly um and they're trained to deal with a lot of um general situations that, um, you know, could turn, but, um, um, you know, they're, they're taught, you know, how, you know, to get close, you, you know, just the different manners that they need to know, um, and different levels of politeness. Um, but an ESA, it's almost kind of the opposite in that regard where a therapy dog is learning to be therapeutic for a wide variety of individuals. And ESA is learning how to be therapeutic for one specific individual. And so that one specific individual, then you can take your ESA and you can teach them all of these specific things about this individual and their issues that they need help with. Um, whereas a therapy dog, they need to be able to remain open and like open to anything and willing to do anything. Um, an ESA can get to know you a lot better and what you, your needs are, um, and how they can help your needs. So, um, 
I even, I think Daisy can predict my migraines. I have started noticing that Daisy gets really anxious um, and it's hard to tell because my migraines occur later. And so I don't always make the link, but now I've been thinking about it and I, cause I've started noticing um, when I had my migraines every other day, um, I started noticing Daisy in these like mood swings and then my migraines kind of have gone away. I haven't had one in a while, knock on wood. Um, and she's been a lot calmer and I'm starting, I want to pay attention because I think that she, um, cause I think about my migraines, I have to take my meds. There's, I call it the window of opportunity. Um, as soon as I notice I have a migraine coming, I have about five minutes that I can take my meds and have them be effective. And if I miss that window, um, doesn't matter how many meds I take or when I take them, they're not going to help at all. I really might as well just save them, put them back in the bottle and save them for another time. Um, and so whenever I do have a migraine start, I'm usually rushing around and panicking because I know I have a very small window of opportunity and I have the whole aura and everything that precedes the headache. And so I'm curious if Daisy has started to figure out, um, you know, she knows my reaction. Hush. She knows my reaction to a migraine. And so it would make sense to me that, um, she would start paying attention to like, where is this reaction from mom coming from? And, um, you know, and I've got a whole good girl, Vienna, using a potty tray. I'm so proud of her. Good girl, Vienna. Good girl, potty. Good girl. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yes, you are. You are. You're such a good girl. Yes, Tom is a good girl, too. After Myra has puppies, Pom will be next. Pom is going to have puppies after Myra. And they're going to be Pom and Macchiato puppies. Um, so that'll be my Pom's next heat cycle. Um, and she, her last litter was with Macchiato. And so um, if you, there's a playlist of every litter we have, there's going to be a playlist. And each mom is only ever going to have no more than one litter in a year. And so playlist will be titled like Palms Puppies 2023. And so you can go into our playlist and you can find Palms Last Litter um, on that playlist for Palms Puppies 2023. Um, but her last litter was with Macchiato. And so you can, um, um, oh, and Mocha is a Macchiato and Palm Puppy. Um, there we go. Somebody's like, I Um. Here, Mocha. Let's show everybody how pretty you are. Mocha's going to be one of our mommies, too. She's so beautiful. She is a wonderful ESA dog. Oh, she's a good doggie. Um, so she is a Pom and Macchiato puppy. And Pom is going to be, she'll probably, her next litter will probably be, let's see, she was born in June. So her next litter will probably be in like July time frame. And so she'll probably, um, It'll probably be mated around May, May or June, and um, her litter, like Myra's, will be a um, colorful litter, um, every color in the rainbow, in the Cavalier rainbow. Um, and what on you? How did you get all this mud on you? I know, I need a brush. I need a brush. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know, I get a brush, I get a brush. I'm sorry. Hi, Remy dog. Who's a good girl? Remy's not gonna have her next puppies until the fall. She is just starting her break heat cycle. Um, so she's not being bred this cycle. She's gonna, she's on break. You're a good girl. Remy is our most playful mom. She is still a puppy at heart. Um, when we brought Remy home from her breeder, she was, she was eight weeks old and let me see. Um, we had a litter of six or seven week old puppies and we put her um, in the pen with them. And 
for some reason we didn't have like a good place for her. I think it was because we had that litter of puppies and it was before we had a second pen set up. And so we were like, well, where, where do we put Remy? We had a kitchen full of um, bigger dogs and um, she was interested in playing with the puppies. So we just figured we'll put her in with the puppies. And um, that kind of became Remy's thing was to just play with all the puppies. Every time we had a litter, Remy went in and um, hung out with them for almost the whole day. She would just play nonstop. Um, and she did that um, pretty much until she got to be too big to go in the pen with them. Um, Hi, sweetie. And um, it seems, it feels like um, all that time with the puppies, all those litters of puppies, um, kind of just helped cement this personality tree, this playfulness that she has. It's just like cemented into her personality. Yes, it's just never left. She's just always gonna be a puppy. She loves her puppies. She's so good with. She is so good with them. She likes having puppies so she can be a puppy again. Yes, you're a good girl. You are a good mama. You're a good mama. And Robin's a good mama too. Robin really likes having puppies. In fact, she likes to take other puppies. She, um, she and Daisy, they had um, their, well, they had their first and second litters at the same time together. But her, their second litters, <clears throat> um, Robin, we had we had Daisy in the doggy bathroom, and Robin was in with her puppies in our bedroom. And the doggy bathroom is connected to our bedroom. And I would open the door and kind of sneak in there to go check on Daisy and her puppies. And Robin would blow past me and Daisy would guard her puppies. She did not want any help. She didn't want any visitors. And Robin did not care. That just, like, Robin would just fly past and she would jump in the pool and she would start licking the puppies and cleaning them. And Daisy did not care. She would just defend the puppies and guard them. And, um, if not carefully supervised, there would have been some really awful, ugly dog fights. Um, because as I'm sure you know, you don't you don't mess with a mama dog. She got her puppies, um, a mama anything with their, with their babies, and um, and so Robin, she just she it didn't matter to her either because that would happen one day and the next day she'd be right back at it. Um, and so ever since then, before that. Robin and Daisy were very, very close. Um, their first litters, Daisy's puppies were very underweight and she wasn't producing enough milk. And so we like ninja Daisy out and ninja Robin in so that Robin could nurse Daisy's puppies because she was like overflowing with milk. And her Daisy's puppies were so happy because they had been kind of fussy and none of them had very full bellies, but they were constantly nursing on Daisy even though she didn't have much in there. And so when they got to nurse on Robin, they just got to eat until they were full. And so they were all very full and plump and happy. And Robin was a happy mama. Um, and she cleaned them up and she went back to her puppies. <clears throat> they brought Daisy back in. And Daisy was instantly suspicious. She was sniffing the whole crate or the pool. She was sniffing everything. She was like turning the blankets upside down, like searching for this this mama dog who came in, she probably knew it was Robin, but she was uh, searching for her in the towels, like determined to find her and give her a piece of her mind. Um, and of course then after she didn't find her, um, she just kind of sat up and then, you know, looked around and was just very protective of her puppies from that point forward. Um, and so if I had to guess, I think it would be doing that that created this rift between them. Um, but we wouldn't take it back because the puppies really needed to be fed. They needed, um, they needed Robin to nurse them. And, you know, they were probably about three weeks old when that happened. And so we brought Robin in about once a day going forward from that point. And the puppies just were thriving after that. Um, and so it was still a good decision. That was what they needed. Um, but now Daisy has become extremely territorial of her puppies, especially with Robin. Um, because with her second litters, Robin could not even look her direction before Daisy would start growling and barking and snapping. And, um, so they've recently become friendly again with each other. Um, you know, they haven't had puppies together at the same time. Um, 
for a while. It's been since that second litter of theirs about a year and a half ago. Um, um, and so they're doing a little bit better, but if both of them are in heat, they can get a little testy. Um, but it was it's very advantageous when you have one litter of puppies and um, if mom's not producing enough milk, whether whether she's not producing enough milk or if she's just got so many puppies that they go through it quickly. Um, either way, they really needed some kind of supplement. And I mean, we could have supplemented them with some sort of formula, but um, if we have the ability to give them the more natural um, experience with a mom who's cleaning them and, you know, stimulating all of their, um, their nervous system. And, you know, they, there's so much development going on, even when um, the puppies are nursing. Um, because if you have a singleton pregnancy, if you have a singleton litter with just one puppy, it is strongly, strongly advised that you find another breeder in the vicinity, anywhere you can, um, who has a litter close to the same age so that you can slip your puppy in with them. Because when they're nursing and even when they're in their little puppy pile, when they're kind of slithering around, getting comfortable and finding milk, they're learning a lot. They're learning, you know, how to interact with each other and they're learning how um, other puppies respond to their presence. Um, you know, just the little things that they're, when they go to find a nipple and nurse, there's just a lot of little steps in there that help their brains develop. And so if you have a single tin litter, um, you're taking away, or at least you're losing all of that developmental necessities that, um, that they require in order to become well-rounded, well-socialized puppies. Um, if you have a singleton litter that grows up, a puppy that grows up just, you know, them and their mom without any other puppies, um, those puppies have been shown to grow up and have um, more problems with socialization. They usually, um, they've been found to be a little more aggressive. Um, just, they um, have a tendency to just, they just don't, like, they don't understand social cues as well. And so that, um, lack of understanding, I think, contributes to some of the aggression. It's like the fear um, and not being able to understand. And then, so they just, it comes out in aggression. Um, and so it can result in a lot of behavioral problems. And so you want them to be able to engage in all of these um, developmental activities that they do with each other because um, they're meant to be born in a litter. So We had our smallest litter was two puppies, actually. Um, well, it was three puppies when they were born, um, but one passed away, unfortunately. Um, and that was Pom's first litter. And um, the two did really well. Um, they had each other. And so that that was enough. Um, but we were nervous that, you know, if either one of them had a problem and, and didn't make it, then we would have been down to that one puppy. Um, we do, we're lucky that we do have some nearby breeders, um, even if it's a different breed. Um, but like if we had a, a singleton happen like that, um, it wouldn't be too difficult. I think we could use our vet as a resource to reach out to some of their um, breeder clients. And I think we would be successful in probably resolving that. But, um, you know, it's a complication that you gotta be aware of that, um, we might have to contend with it someday. All right, Robin Dog. You'll take care of all the puppies. I know that. Yeah, you'll take care of all of them. Oh, I think I forgot all my coffee. I'm going to get my coffee. You are a good girl. Wash my hands and get my coffee. Yep. Hi, sweetie. Hi, girl. Hi. Hello, Remy. Oh, Vienna is Mocha teasing you. Tom, Tom. Mocha.
with the doggies. Daisy, what are you doing want ice cubes? Sweeping them. Oh, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but many of you may be familiar with how Robin loves to get into the trash can. And so we've got our next addition to help with trash can a can of diced green chilies. So that's supposed to help weigh down the garbage stopper. It does okay. <laughs> I don't think it's stronger than Robin though. We do have some child safety latches around here somewhere um, that we found and now it's just a matter of refinding them. Excuse me Paris, I gotta pick up your toys. My goodness, you guys, they've turned three ropes into like 18 ropes by just chewing them in half.
All right, this floor really needs to be clean, so I'm gonna sweep and go over it with a mop of some sort.
Boys aren't in here. No. They're gone. Okay. Oh, okay.
Boca, Myra. Thank you. 
fields to the west. I drove down that way and then towards oh, I east. Was that? 
Yeah, right. But I met her. I hit her. Went towards Bonnie's, and then a uh, guy driving a black pickup truck stopped, and because uh, he noticed that I had stopped, and I was like yelling out the window, and uh, hey, I'm looking for three dollars. And I was like, no, they don't, they don't, they don't even really come through me. And he's like, oh, I know which ones they are. And uh, I was like, have you seen them? And I down toward Butch's and. Uh, and he was like, no, I haven't that's because he was coming from that direction. And I was like, okay, thank you. And then I drove that way, hollering, and then I came back, went up to them to go see if they might have gone over to they might have heard the animals that they had over there. They weren't there, and I was coming back, I saw Macchiato like right on the top of the hill. Yeah, and, and he was just like trying to see him in the worms. Yeah, well, I, I thought that it'd be easier to see uh, Spike and uh, Rio. Yeah, they're not easier. Macchiato, it's like you see the black dark. Yeah, and so he was he was trotting back towards the house, and then I got you know, I crested the little like ridge right here, and I could see it down the road, and Spike oh, was down like by the telephone pole running this way, and then I started. Sort of, yeah, they're they were coming this direction. Oh, it's for the cats and yeah. it's for the boys. Yeah, because the boys not being neutered, I don't want them to be posing yeah. risk to other families. Yeah. God, we only really know that they would come up on some family that's outside playing and just like a out of into a fight because and everybody knows our dogs anyway, so if we're gonna have air tags on them, and next time as we run into people, we're gonna be like, hey, see the air tag pop up, you can go ahead and save it. Um I thought for a second as I was heading back, I was like, oh, maybe they went into the barn. Because I thought it was weird that I didn't like they completely disappeared. And they were just out in the fields. Curious for the reason to keep um Lola inside for now because if she's got space, we don't want her rolling around and fertilizer after Myla. Hi. Hi. Hush. 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 Tag sleeves or whatever, all for it.
Daisy, you missed the joy skew. Thank <laughs> you. 
first.
Okay. 
Uh, that box doesn't have lids. Yeah, we need a lid. Oh, wait, this one might have a lid. This one's got some, got some stuff in it, but this one's pretty good. Check this out. Does that have a lid? Yeah, this, they're folded in. Oh! So, let's use it! Yeah, you can use that one. Can we do it? We'll have to call it. Bella, we, we got time to do it. We don't have to do it right now. Huh?
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, let me grab the pliers real quick. Oh, goodness gracious. Go ahead, I'm back downstairs, baby. I'll be down in a second.
Ash.
Hey, mom's got a really bad migraine. What? You bring it. What? Can you bring it? Let's see if it's heavy, but no. No, I'm just saying, mom got a really bad migraine, so she's in there now. Okay. Are you okay? Wrong. Is it heavy? Oh, oh. there's a spur right there. <laughs> Hush, dogs. Hush. Ah. Uh, I want my lunch. I'm school. All right, go ahead and eat it then. I had to get my Chromebook switched because there's a problem with the port. It's the port. Glad that got it fixed. You mean the mandarin oranges? Yep. I really them today. Oh, she did?
I'll get that, I'll get that.
He is not thinking. Ouch. Ouch. Dad, do you want to play? No.
I want to tell you something.
I'm gonna kick your ass. Oh no, no problem. But plus the S X. I want to make like um one of those rice cups. 
little um, tissue boxes and make it into a log. Good, yeah. Good. Around logs. Yeah. And then um, I could cut the corners to make it like a log shape. Right. And maybe cut. Oh, I know, because it's already cut in the top. Um, I thought I it was. Oh my god, though, thank you so much. Thank you, Dad, can I use this one? Oh, there's a piece in it. No oh, you can put it into a different tissue. Uh, Is this going to be big enough? Yeah. Sure. It, yeah, it has to fit in your desk. No, that's not. This is. I mean, perfect. And for only 24 students, and most of them are Wait, really Wait, I have 24 people in my class? We used to only have 22. Well, uh, Dad, can I use this? Yay! All right, we need to find another tissue box. Why another one? Huh? Why another one? Put these tissues in. And then I'm gonna need to cut the plastic off. Oh, I guess the plastic is here.
Mocha.
Hello.
Hello. I'll be writing the names down. Yeah. 
I just want to write down the names. Please. Oh, you're not writing on the box, no. Just the names. Got oh, it? No, you're not writing on the box. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good job, Bella. I did six names. Six. So I'm 16 names. Six years old. Raylan, Raylan, Lakewood, Kenny, Caleb, and James. Oh, very nice. Do you want to see? Very good writing, Bella. That's, that's who is going to pick. Ah. Do you want me to do seven? Sure. What? Which one do? You, which boy or girl do you want to do? Which boy or which girl? Do you want boy or girl? A boy or a girl, Dad? Boy. Okay. So I did yeah. Caleb, Kenny, James. I didn't do Jason. I only can do Jason because he's fun. Preston, Timothy. We're not going to do Cortez because he's not. Because he's not in our class. 
Cooper, Landon Auto, Luke Gatlin. Okay.
Hello, guys.
Hey! What's going on here? Wait!
Bella. What? Do you want some uh, chicken nuggets? Uh, chicken nuggets? Yeah. No. No. Do you want a cheeseburger? I want healthy stuff. Uh, the chicken nuggets are healthy. Have strawberries? We have strawberries. Let's see, we have some strawberries. I'm not sure. Can I have strawberries? And then oranges. You know what? We've got strawberries. We've got some blackberries. Blackberries? And oranges? We don't have oranges. No, mandarin oranges. Mandarin oranges? Yeah. The ones with juice inside. The ones with juice. Dad, the one's in cup. The one in the cup. Dad. The I, know. I know which ones. What? I know what you're talking about. I'm going fishing right now. How are you? Oh, well, you gotta have something more than just fruit. I just like fruit. I didn't say that you like fruit, but you need to have something more than that. Chicken nuggets? Blueberry! Oh. We have blueberries. How about some chicken nuggets and uh, a thing of peas? What? Do you want some crab meat? Crab meat? Ugh. I'll try crab meat. <laughs> Here, Bella, try, try a piece. Put your mouth and chew it up. No. Good. You like it? Oh, Bella, do you want pig, uh, pigs in a blanket? What? Do you want piggies in a blanket? No. Did you like the crab? No. No. You want chicken nuggets then? Strawberries. Yeah. Yes, you can have strawberries and chicken nuggets. Strawberries? Strawberries. And blackberries? And blackberries and blueberries, but you're also gonna have chicken nuggets. Chicken yeah, nuggets and those tangerines in the cup. They're called tangerines. Those are not tangerines. That's all I want. They're mandarin. I I want them tangerines because because those are because what you call them are are the and that's what. The name is Tangerines.
Why are you focused? Why am I focused? Yeah. Because, huh? Why are you focused? Not focused. Focus, man. Can I get a drink? I know how to get to the ice area. Oh, what are you doing? Get to the ice area. What? The ice area. What? Ice area. Ice cereal? No. No, you're not getting into the ice area. No. No, no, no. Here I am, soda. No, no, no. Why? Oh my life. Open it, Jess. Come on, it's a dinner. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing?
it was the day. Was the day, Dad? Today's the fifth, baby. Hey. Monday, the fifth of February. February. Day the fifth of February. Yeah. Yeah.
Hush. Vienna. Bam. Bella. Hey, Bradley. May. Hey, you coming? Huh? Huh? 
One. One. One package, one cup. I tried to get up, but, um, really, you don't have to be so rude. I'm just waiting there. Oh, I didn't really hear behind me. But. I was getting up and and my calf decided to to like a Charlie horse except 
It wasn't a Charlie horse. It was, it was weird, but. Wow. It still hurts so bad. It is.
Man, your birthday is really close. What is it again? The ninth? Seven? I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't care. What is it? November 8th, 2013. I'm making a point to memorize your birthday. Sorry. February eighth. Well, I was close. Yeah, I was one day away. Favorite number? Hey, Dad. What's your favorite number? Six million. Of course it is. Who did not do that? Do you have to leave the new Yes. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can say them in your mind. You can say them in your mind. You can say them in your mind. Yourself a cheese sandwich. Okay. I'm not hungry. I'm full. So you gotta eat a chicken nugget. I did. I'll eat one more.
Dad, would you say my room keeps more clean than my other rooms? No. Nope. What do you mean? I keep my room way cleaner now. No, you don't. The fact that you didn't even have three rooms is just crazy. What? The fact that you didn't even have three rooms is crazy. The fact that I have a dirty room? Yeah, dog, man. I don't have three rooms! I don't own them all! I only own one! That's it! Which one do you own? The best bedroom! No, the best bedroom is temporary. What are you saying? I can make. Come on, Bella, eat one more chicken nugget. One more chicken nugget. You don't have to eat it with the ketchup.
Whoa. Mm -hmm. Eat one more chicken nugget. Come on. Bro. Okay. Eat one more chicken nugget, please. Oh. Oh. You understand? Oh. You say whole, oh, but eat one more chicken nugget. Oh. Three, two, one. Oh. 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 Oh.
Annabella Rose. Bella. What? Stop. Get up off the floor now. Oh. Gotta eat one more. Okay, Bella. I smoke Three. Two. Bella. Bella, look at me. Huh? No. On your hand.
That's three hundred. That's enough. That hurts.
Do you want some chocolate pudding? Do you want some chocolate pudding? Anything else like what?
You are in the living room.
Daisy. Hold on, Vienna girl. Let me get Bella's water bottle. Bella? Oh, did you put your ice cream down? Where is it here? Here. You silly dogs. Hold on.
Am I hearing any better?
Hi, Wilson. Oh, hi, Paris. You're so sweet.
Hey, everybody. See you in the morning.